And if you just see the trends of from 2017 to 2020, since these three years, the number of competition has increased by at least four to five times. So yes, uh, to be able to be employable and to be get and to get a job, you need to have the skills that are still required in market. My name is Chayan Kathuria and I am properly from Delhi and uh, I completed my B.Tech from Bharati Vidya Peet University in Pune and I joined TCS uh, as the campus placement in 2018. So recently I, I gave an interview for ZS so I'll be joining ZS as a data science associate in January and currently as a part of uh, volunteering roles I'm working with Omdena. So Omdena is a AI volunteering collaborative platform. So I'm working as a machine learning engineer on a voluntary basis there currently. When I was in college, I didn't know about data science or machine learning or in any of those terms. So I came to know about them by reading some news online that you know these terms exist. But what I came to know, I mean, hearing from people that it involves a lot of mathematics. So you need to be a mathematician or you know you had to be have that great knowledge in mathematics. So I, I, I took up a course online, which is one by Andrew NG. And the very, very first week had a lot of mathematics and equations into it. And I was just, you know, intimidated, like I cannot do this. So I just stopped it. But with time, I, I mean, there was a teacher, a trainer and of, and I mean, not in the campus, but otherwise. So I attended his uh, meetup. So he taught the basics of mathematics or machine learning. So the, the workshop was called Essential Mathematics for Machine Learning. So that got me really interested into it. I mean, he cleared the basic concepts like linear algebra and matrices and calculus and all those things. So that got me interested into it. And then I think the, the one tip I'll have for the beginners or the people who are still in college is that don't be intimidated by it, just do the basics. So, I mean, you can, you don't need to be a mathematician or a genius to be a machine learning engineer. So just do the basics of mathematics, learn some coding and do the, the basic stuff and you'll be good. So I started with TCS in September, 2018. And initially I wasn't having any projects. So, I mean, you, you might know that people sit on bench for an, a couple of months and then they get into projects. So that was the free time that really got me and I'm anxious that I cannot waste much time. So I need to learn something. And I was also had a bit of interest in data science and machine learning. So I started up learning Python and statistics from online courses. So that got me interested. And once my work started with TCS, I, I still made a plan that I need to spare at least one hour per day during the weekdays and at least two to three hours per day um, from during the weekend. So that got me rolling. So I started getting up the basic concepts, Python, SQL, and statistics. And then I found about a offline course, a trainer whom I had attended my uh, class while in college as well. So he was uh, you know, holding an offline course, a full offline course of data science. So I joined that course as well, which was on weekends. He used to teach us the machine learning concepts and every every basic little knowledge of machine learning and data science. And, and then using the remaining time of my weekends to do some projects, write some blogs. And that's how I just not to waste any time and uh, utilizing your time well so that while you are working, but you, you have a plan set that you have to you know give at least one hour per day and at least five hours during the weekend. So that's, that's how I... I slowly, slowly gain some skills and then started building up on it. I had made a target of two years that I, in two years, I need to scale up, learn whatever skills are needed, do the whatever projects are needed, and then started applying for jobs. So I, I used to go to the job portals, see what skills are required for those jobs. For example, I, I landed up on page of Paytm for data scientists, and I just looked up what all skills they required. And then accordingly, I made a plan, okay, these are skills I still need to work upon and then, you know, work upon it. And then once I knew that I now have a certain set of skills and certain expertise level, then I started applying for jobs. And ZS also came into picture when, when I came to know that ZS also hires for data science, uh, data scientists, and then I also applied for that. So initially, uh, my the applying to job process started back in February. I might have applied to more than 50 opportunities and got callbacks from not more than 10. And I gave the interviews and slowly, I mean, few of them shortlisted me, but few of them didn't go ahead due to either they rejected me or either they didn't want to wait for the three months notice period. And then ZS happened. I applied for ZS as well and Infosys as well. So I had got shortlisted in both of them. Uh, so ZS offered me before Infosys. So I, I went up with that.
ZS hires for data scientists at multiple levels. First of all, just, just clarifying that. So whether if, if you are a college student, be it in third year or fourth year, still you are graduating or you have graduated two years back. So you can join the, the first level is the associate. So data science associate. And the second is associate consultant. Third is consultant and fourth is manager. So for the data science associate role, they the ZS expects you to have a basic uh, machine learning knowledge be it internships, be it projects, be it some experience as a working uh, uh, graduate as well, be it zero to two years. The interview process is just applying straight to their job portal, which is the, their careers page. So they directly shortlist all the resumes from there. So once you have applied uh, your resume on the ZS website, they will come back to you if your resume is shortlisted. Uh, they, that, that's the first screening process. So once that is done, the, the first round is the machine learning challenge. They give a machine learning problem on Hacker Earth, which contains a data set and a machine learning problem. Like and this is the data set, this is what the data contains, and this is what you need to predict. For this is the test data. So you need to download the data, do some analysis, all the machine learning steps on it, and then submit the predictions in a CSV file back on that Hacker Earth. So it's just like a Kaggle project. Second round is the, the technical, discussion of that uh, machine learning solution so we need you need to prepare a presentation a ppt describing all the steps you took while solving that machine learning problem from this first step from data fetching to prediction all the steps that you took you explain to them and then they ask you and once that is done that is an, also an elimination round so the third and the final round is another technical round in which they can ask you anything so you mostly it is based on resume so you should be thorough with your resume, which, whichever skill you have put in, whichever project you have put in, and whichever experience or internship you have put in. Also, statistics is a lot, uh, is a subject which is focused a lot uh, in ZS interviews. So these were the three rounds. So once these three rounds are over, the, the next step is uh, the, the final call. Profile building uh, techniques, definitely it is very crucial because the first step, as I had mentioned, that once you, you know, submit your application, the first thing that screens, gets screened is a resume. So if your resume is not up to the mark, or if, if it doesn't stand out from the crowd, you might get rejected. And um, so the most important tip is to adding all the uh, keywords that are mentioned in the job description. For example, if the job description mentions Python, SQL, Pandas, or anything, you should be knowing those things and that exact keyword should be present in your resume. And your resume should not only include all the skills, but the experience that you have written should Tell what all you have done. I mean, it should based be action based things like developed a machine learning project using this algorithm, implemented a algorithm using this data. So it should say that you have done those things and you have got some results. It it should quantify your results. If you're at college, you can definitely if you see there is a lot of buzz and hype around data science. Many people are getting into it. And if you just see the trends of from 2017 to 2020, since these three years, the number of competition has increased by at least four to five times. So yes, uh, to be able to be employable and to be get and to get a job, you need to have the skills that are still required in market. So the the one the best thing that you can do to know that is to regularly go to the job descriptions of many job postings which are still getting posted. See what all companies are asking you, whether it is Python, whether it is SQL, whether it is R, or whether it is TensorFlow or Keras. So you just cannot sit and learn every other thing, but you need to know what all specific skill sets are being required from the from the uh, industry and focus on that and also reading up on internet all the latest technologies for example recently gpt3 got launched but again it is not like you need to know gpt3 it's a very very advanced thing but what i suggest is you focus on the basic things stay stay focused to what all job descriptions are asking you and learn that and it, it still doesn't it's not going to change in time soon so once you have all these uh, different skill sets of the stack of the data science, you will be good. Considering that the amount of courses and resources are available at the moment, if you search machine learning, you will get 10,000 results. So my suggestion would be to stick to one course. So the one course that everyone else suggests is the Andrew NG machine learning course on Coursera. So that's a very, very good and long course. So it's a five week course. Once you do that, you will definitely have the complete basic knowledge and hands-on knowledge as well. Apart from that, there is a book which is called Hands-on Machine Learning with TensorFlow. So that is a book which is from the Packard publication. So that book uh, takes you from the beginner stage of machine learning to the advanced stage using hands-on as well. So that's another thing that you should follow. And once you have done these two uh, minimum number of uh, resources, you should also keep following blogs on Medium, which is towards data science. 
and there is another blog which is uh, called machine learning mastery by jason brownlee so once you have these specific skill sets you can go on to kaggle you can get you make a profile on kaggle see what other people are doing check out other people's kernels check out their notebooks what all they have done and then also start doing your own so in that way you what all you have learned through these courses and books you then you apply on kaggle the six step strategy that i mention is the first thing is to have the right skills and the competencies so the right skills being all the basic skills python sql machine learning algorithms or deep learning algorithms so these are the skills and the competencies also include the projects that you should do on kaggle or any other hackathon that makes a skill set for you that you have these competencies the second thing is to make a great resume so a great resume is not just a fancy resume with blue or green colors but it should uh, a great resume is when you have all the projects mentioned in a very good way you have the all the points quantified and everything should be structured easily easily clearly visible the third thing is to have a resume which is targeted for a job i mean if you are applying for 10 jobs the same resume won't be fit into all those 10 jobs because every job might have a different requirement even if it is a data scientist every job might require a different particular skill set so you should carefully read what the job description ask you ask you and see what all keywords are mentioned in, in those uh, you know um, job description the fourth point is to planning a targeted job search because just applying on job portals like linkedin and mocky.com is not a good way you should definitely do that but also a more targeted way would be to make a list of 10 companies and then to connect with the people who are working there and then ask for referrals and also from from whatsapp groups and all those things the fifth way would be utilizing linkedin for job opportunities so using utilizing linkedin by posting out content by influencing other people by reaching out to people and connecting with them that is another great way sixth way would be to leveraging community and your connections so there are a lot of communities for beginners and job search as well so be it whatsapp groups be it telegram channels or slack communities as well so you can join those communities and be active on those platforms because a lot of job postings get posted there and you can definitely directly i mean get the email ids of the hr or the recruiting managers and just reach out to them because that will definitely make your job search way faster than just applying on nokri or any other job portal